give me a little bit of history about your company? So Riff uh, started the company along with another developer, Jerry, and they were working at Valve. Mm -hmm. uh, Rick has lost his voice, otherwise I'd rather speak for himself. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, Rick, he comes out of the game business and uh, done a bunch of AAA titles, and he was at Valve, and Jerry was hired to start the hardware lab at Valve, which led to all that VR work from the Vive and the Oculus, as well as uh, Fast AR. The two of them left, actually with Christina, another Valve person, mm -hmm. and started this company around March or April of 2013. Uh, did a Kickstarter in uh, October, November. Hit their, well, actually failed to hit their target. Trying to reach 400K, but raised about 1.2 million. So, <laughs> <laughs> did not get the target right. Hit, that, hit their original 400 in just 48 hours. Wow, that's um, awesome. And uh, I joined about a year ago, a little bit over, some professional oversight. Uh, I actually was in the gaming industry. I was actually working on AR and VR at Atari in the 80s. Okay. The same year you were born. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know how far back that was. This is one of these technologies that comes and goes. Uh, but what we've done after the Kickstarter is we've shipped this early developer hardware to our, you know, we had. The Kickstarter, one of the awards was early hardware, and so people paid a premium for that. We found those people and some other developers have been using them just to explore the nature of AR, or explain of what cast AR can do. And some of the things are not at all obvious, you know, like the fact that you can see physical objects on the table, right? That makes it very, it's a very diff different kind of experience. Um, the fact that you can lean forward, and, and it's like the real world, you, you get more and more detail, and in VR, um, you teach away from that gesture because it, that is the most likely to get people sick, right? So those games are more rigid. These games are much more, and experiences yeah, are much more, more fluid. fluid. Yeah, precisely. Um, and since then, uh, we've been working on other input devices like this wand. Um, and we recently raised uh, venture capital money. So okay. our goal is at uh, CES to announce the developer hardware. Which oh, nice. will ship to the rest of you know our Kickstarter supporters anyway, mm -hmm. as well as have tens of thousands of tens of thousands of units to be able to to ship to developers and enthusiasts who really want to experiment with the technology. Um, it'll be a lot lighter. You remarked at how light these were. Yeah. But it'll weigh about half of this. Wow. So our target is to weigh uh, about seventy grams. Wow. Yeah. One of the things that I sort of remarked earlier while demoing it is. You know, I'm part of the glasses wearing population. Mm -hmm. uh, although, you know, for these things, I always come wearing contacts because I sort of figure in a lot of the sort of VR and, and other technologies that are out there, they don't really keep in mind those who wear glasses. And I commented on how it was very seamless. And right, you just put put it on top of your glasses. So. I, I like it when we give demos and people say, "Oh, uh, should I take off my glasses?" I always say, "Only if you want to." Yeah, uh, because it should be it should fit the way you play, right? And right. The whole experience fits the way people play. You know, in the VR, you take the screen and you lock, wrap it around your head and you lock the world out, right? In this case, you know, we're talking here. You didn't interview me by Skype. Why? Because we want to have a human interaction, and this is a game experience that allows you to have a more normal human interaction. It behaves. What it does is it brings the virtual world into the real world. It makes it act like real world. And that's kind of the essence of what the technology is for. As a company, we, we're making a tabletop experience to begin because we want it to be fun. Our vision is the consumer, our consumer product, which we want to release in about 18 months, will be something that grandma will buy for the kids. Open, tear open the paper, open the game box, put on the game board, and within a minute be playing. Okay? You need to simplify a lot of stuff. You need to worry about the fact that kids might, or grown-ups might wear glasses. Um, you need to worry about the fact that they don't want to have, they're not going to have the patience to plug in a lot of wire. And most important, grandma's not going to buy them an $1,100 gaming PC. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? <laughs> it has to be fun. And, and that's really guided a lot of decisions, making it lighter, looking at ways to simplify the play, and looking at ways to make the play a lot more engaging. Mm -hmm. And it seems like it's very sort of pick up. Um, and go, right? There wasn't really much of a learning curve to determine how to move and play and interact with it. Popped them on your head and didn't really give you many instructions, right? Yeah. In fact, mm -hmm. But I noticed with adults, they stand still, right? Hold them on, because mm -hmm. we're taught to stand still, and especially when, when VR, you don't want to move around because you can't see the world. Um, by comparison, we had kids who climb on the table and play. 
<laughs> so engaged in the play that they want to actually be part of it. Right? That's that, really that, cool. Stuff like that is so much fun. That's and awesome. It's fun, to, fun to see, and of course they're having fun. Yeah, yeah. So I guess just to, you know, for the drill down and Geeks of Doom, we always are talking about technology in general and comparing it to you know, history, present, and future. Um, given that you guys have been in this industry for a while and kind of seen the various uh, various changes along the times, what do you say that sort of progression has been, and where do you also see it going well, one of the things that's been good for us um, is that, which was not true before, so we can take care of a lot of technological, uh, you know, technology is advancing to the point now where there's, there's enough computation that we can do this pose calculation I was talking about. The fact that the tracking, our tracking has to be extremely per precise compared to a VR headset. Um, well, we can do some of that now in hardware and some of that in software, and it can be, it's, it just wasn't feasible even five years ago. Uh, this is a projected technology. We shine, there's a projector for each eye that shines the picture that your eye should be seeing at all times. And there's, there was a lot of work in microprojectors a few years ago um, that's allowed us to take advantage of that part of the manufacturing, mm -hmm. manufacturing cycle. Um, and then I think also, you know, there's a lot of desire for, for fun. I'll say this again, because a lot, of the, a lot of the VR headsets and some of the AR experiences also, they emphasize a kind of a shock and awe, right? My head exploded is a common phrase from one of the AR, mm -hmm. magically, the AR people. And they talk about, you know, super, even the video games, super hyper, you know, uh, super realistic, accurate gunshot, whatever. And what we're kind of forgetting is that you know, just chopping up the Jenga blocks is super fun. Yeah. You can do that for hours, unfortunately. We have to switch it off at work, because otherwise you just sit there. And, <laughs> you know. and, and I think also, by being an AR rather than VR experience, we're really bring the social aspect. Do you know board games have been growing 25% a year for the past four or five years? You know, that does not surprise me, given the influx of it. You see it at conventions, like here at PAX, and uh, like there's a lot of innovation in that space, too, right. which is really cool. And why do people like it, right? Because you're playing with your friends. Yeah. Now, we could play a video game against your friends, you know, with a, like a... Uh, sports game, football game, you could be, each of us could be in the end zone, you know, mm -hmm. trash talking each other, and, ah, watching your expression when I, you know, score that goal. Uh, but you see people want to just play games. My son, he wants to play magic and flip the cards down and see the, and, and actually have his own uh, spell come out and attack the other, you know, yeah. his opponent, right? Those are where we can really have a lot more social and fun engagement. Hmm. Um, instead of playing Destiny, he complains actually, because he loves playing Destiny with his friends, and they're like, oh, let's play Destiny. So his friend goes home. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it defeats the purpose in many ways of playing together, right? And this is a this is really a together experience. It doesn't have to be. Uh, I mean, I was telling you, we're always surprised by our developers. There was one developer who did a French company, and they had a kind of an architectural, you know, dungeon D and D dungeon style base where you could build out and explore. And they had some people uh, on the computer and some people in the VR. One guy in a VR headset. And then they were over, some of them were over in our office and they had developed for the Cast AR. So they had a multi, you know, sort of multimodal experience. Um, and so it was shared and yet also uh, shared in private. For me, um, and I've been in the video game industry for 25 years, and I've watched games transition from 2D to 3D to video cards to modem play to the internet to mobile devices. Uh, I've always was a you know, consumer those technology changes. But this is the first time where I've actually been able to kind of lead the charge into a, a new gaming realm, a new way that we can engage players, different styles of gameplay and all that kind of stuff. And it's, it's really exciting for me to do things that people have never seen before, ways to interact. And it's, you know, unlike any other industry, it's, my job is making people have fun. And uh, it's, it's really rewarding. And so I'm really looking forward to, to unleashing this on the other public. Great, that's that's awesome. When I think of gaming and think of all the fun that I had in my youth and growing up, it was really about those social experiences, about having fun. Those were the days where, you know, rather than being able to play online, you'd go to your friend's house and you'd spend hours there. Yeah, I mean, if you've heard of QuakeCon, yep. you know, yeah. why do people around the country bring love their computers and back in the day CRTs? To this hot location in Texas. It's yeah. because they want to get together and have a big land party. Right. That's, that's, that's the whole social aspect. 
one of the things that I, of course, notice is that you only see the perspective within your sort of headset. So we were playing a game of Battleship, mm -hmm. and I could only see my ships on the board and was trying to aim and, and target yours. So I think that's something that's sort of key and critical to kind of keep in, in, in mind that you have those. But as you kind of covered, there could also be other experiences in there where you have like a dungeon master who can see everything. That's right. Um, There's no reason why. I mean, okay, what, the way I put it is as a, a, sh a shared personalized environment. So in a simple case, you just share a 3D world and you see your perspective in the other one. And mm -hmm. then, as you, as you noticed, and there's differential play in the, uh, in the battleship game. But it could be extreme, you know, we could have a big uh, uh, tactical uh, battle, military battle, and I can only see my troops and the cannons getting smoked, but the wind's blowing one way, so I can't see this, but the other player can see that. Um, or at an extreme example, we, you know, we talk about things like um, well, D&D, right? In night, in a, in, if you're in a cave, the dwarves can see, humans cannot, unless there's a <laughs> pool of light. by a groom. Yeah, so every different player can see the right, the right thing. Or you could have a map where we're seeing the same map, but you see the satellite view and I see the topo view. Yet when I put my finger and point to something, we both point to the same location. Right. We're just seeing it in the way, in the different kind of mode that we would look at it. Yeah. Um, I, I think there's going to be incredible opportunities, uh, not just in the tabletop, but in, in other kind of configurations for mm -hmm. people to have this kind of differentiated and yet shared play. Uh, one of the things that I really liked from this is that you, you have that sort of depth and that sort of precision in how you're touching and, and moving things about while you're still connected to the real world, right? While I can still turn over and look at the people I'm playing with, I can still see my hands, I can still be alert of things going on. You can find your drink. Yeah. What if you're thirsty while playing VR? Yeah. I mean, seriously. I mean, there are commercials out nowadays of people playing VR where they, like, take yeah. off their drinks and, you know, their teammates are wondering what's going on. So. That's right. Whereas this, you can just find your drink without knocking it over. Of course, if you knock over your beer, I can tell you <laughs> this thing handles it just fine. Great. Uh, but also, you can uh, text. My kid likes to text while he plays because he's a teenager and that's what they do. And, uh, you know, you're not using your phone for the game. You're having this whole experience, but you your phone could be part of it. Or you could imagine taking out your phone with the other room, you're holding your phone and just like casting cards or something. Mm -hmm. Everything could be part of the game. So um, I know gaming is a big, uh, it is sort of like your first target area, but I guess are there any other um, maybe verticals or things where you see applications being used for this? That's a great question. I can tell you work for an enterprise company when you talk about <laughs> verticals. Uh, you know, as a, as a company, our focus is going to be on the, to start as a tabletop because it's the most accessible right. and uh, understandable. It lets us constrain a lot of interesting things to make it better for the developers. But we have developers are going off in all sorts of crazy directions. At one extreme, a couple of different groups are building holodeck experiences. Mm -hmm, cool. You go into a room and it's 25 people and the dinosaurs are crunching around. Uh, it, it's actually cooler than I describe it. I was really surprised. <laughs> Uh, and uh, another guy is working, another group, is, they're working on uh, surgery. And so, I don't know if you know, when you use these surgical robots, you look up and away from the patient to look in the, oh, in the screen. Oh, interesting. And so, when they lay, instead of using a, a, a board, like a game board, you can just lay it over the patient. And uh, when they stick the instruments in the patient, they can look around as if, you know, in the old days, they cut the patient over to look around. Now they try to go in through a small hole. So you can still look around and see all the different organs and what you're pushing apart. And, oh, know. wow, that's incredible. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, we're not really focusing on that because, A, you know, we're not going to compete with our, our partners. You know, right. Because content right. developers are false stripes or what really. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, that's they're really our, what they're our true partners, right? Yep. And the second thing is, you know, those guys, they know about their, the domain, you know, they have the domain knowledge for these verticals, you know, and so if we can support them with the technology and the, the cheaper we can make the technology, the more ubiquitous we make the technology, the easier it is for them to bring it into their own own domain. Great. And that's, that's basically our approach. Mm -hmm. So I guess uh, what is sort of next from you from a hardware as well as software perspective? Uh, well, there's a bunch of things we're not going to announce yet, but mm -hmm. I can tell you that, yeah, like I said, CES, we're going to announce uh, and demonstrate our, our developer hardware. Mm -hmm. It's going to weigh about 70 grams. The glasses will be a lot smaller. Um, even a little smaller than this, uh, as far as the lens is concerned, all the electronics, the projectors and stuff are going to be 
much less obtrusive. Um, but also, they'll have a little more style than something that was designed by nerds. Uh, <laughs> nothing wrong with that. But, nothing you know, wrong with that it's, at it's all. It's a particular audience that goes for that. Uh, we're going to get rid of a bunch of wires. Like, this. This is an active device that's blinking at 120 hertz up there in the IR domain, and that's, um, well, an eight-year-old kid's not going to plug in the wire, right? That's yeah. not fun. So we're going to put that all on the game board instead, and we pass it. So the cool thing is that you, you're always looking at it. If you're looking at the board, you knows where you are. So that's actually simplifying and making better. Likewise, you know, get rid of the wire on the wand because you don't really need it, and it makes for a more satisfying experience. Um, and you know, I'll go back to the differentiated play actually for the one because in the valve days we're doing all sorts of experiments of how long it should be. It turns out if it's short, it can be as long as you want in the game, right? Yeah. And so maybe I have a a, a war game where you know, like in the in World War Two, where you push the, the boats around with those little sliders, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it might be a different game or like a, a lightsaber, light, right? lightsaber where we're seeing each other. But then it might be a game where you got a tactical game set over a battlefield, and I'm moving my soldiers around, so I see this nice long effector. But you don't see it, because it's part of my strategy for you not to see it, and right. vice versa, right? Actually gives us a lot more freedom because of this virtual world. So uh, we're going to make a bunch of changes in support of that, and it's going to be much closer to the consumer product, because that's, of course, what the developers are going to want to develop for, mm -hmm. the thing that's ultimately going to be available in volume. If you had one thing that you would want... Um, listeners or even, or people who get an opportunity to play with Cast AR to take away from the experience or take away from it, what would it be? Oh, it's a one-word answer. And I'll tell you that people don't know where to put us, right? Is this AR? Is this VR? You know what? I want them to call it fun. Yeah, okay. that's, that's <laughs> I mean, you tried it. Right. Uh, I had a lot fun. of fun. That was, that was a great time. And so I don't really care what people call it as long as they call it fun. Yeah. Right? And that's our aim all along. It's actually in engineering. We literally, it sounds hokey, but it's true. I'm like, oh, you know, this feature is hard to implement. Maybe we can simplify it. And I'm like, you know, that's an important, fun feature. We can't cut that out. Yeah. Or other times it's like, hey, you know, I'd love to implement this. We could add this thing. It's like, you know... That's really cool, but it doesn't really make the game more, the play more fun. So let's leave it out. It's an important factor for us. Yeah, great, great. Uh, anything else you'd like to add? Uh, well, of course, we want people to come give it a try. Mm -hmm. we, we have limited amount of this hardware right now, so we're not making a super push. Mm -hmm. But uh, in the new year, we're going to have a lot of, like I said, tens of thousands of units. And yep. so we really are eager to find... You know, indies. Already we're humbled by the kinds of crazy things that people are able to do with it, and we would love to have a bunch of developers uh, yeah. excited to try it out. Cause you can see it on your site as well as you said you'll be at CES. Right, and in fact, if you go to our site, we do something a lot of people don't do. We actually shoot through the glasses. So one of the really fun things that ha for me is giving demos to a bunch of people because there's always somebody in the audience who has... Um, there's always somebody in the audience who's been to our website and, of course, assumed we made up the videos like everyone else does. Yes. And so there, it's even more than, you know, being excited. They're like, whoa, this really looks like you said it did. Um, you know, there's, uh, there's a lot of hype out there. Um, and, well, you can look at our videos and you can tell your audience. Oh, yeah, I saw, I actually saw just what they put on their, mm. on their website. Yeah. That's, I mean, I think that's one of the, the issues that you know, some of my podcast colleagues always have, uh, Dwayne especially, when like you go to E3 and the big conferences where they're showing things and you're like, well, is this just a technical you know, demo where they're actually not showing what it really looks like or how it really works? Um, that's, that's awesome that you guys are yeah. actually doing I mean, that, look so. at the HoloLens videos. Have you tried the HoloLens? I have not. Okay, you get but... a 23-degree 23 23 picture in the middle of your view. Right? Yeah. Like that. Mm. Right? And yet their video show is great stuff. Right. right? Yeah. And that's pretty customary. I mean, when I was a little kid, I really wanted that tractor that could climb mountains. And when I got it from my parents, it was like two inches long. <laughs> you know, uh, the camera was right on the ground, right? Uh, that was very frustrating. And frankly, that's not fun. Yeah. So we have the integrity to do the real thing. And, uh, and so that means, you know, let your, let your viewers know. If they check it out. That's what they're really going to get. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time, all of you. And uh, I had a lot of fun I'm with glad. SDR, so really looking forward to what you guys have in the future as well, too. Well, thanks for your time. Thank you.